Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to the world of home tech with me, your host, Paul Hibbert, and welcome to the Stream Deck. I love this thing. It has these little tactile buttons I just can't stop pressing. Uh, Nisha bought it me for Christmas, and the idea of it is that video game players who spend all their time on Twitch can press these things and get shortcuts to come up for Twitter and their Twitch stream, and they can send emojis and do all kinds of cool things. But me being me, I of course went all mad scientist on it and made it do a load of stuff it's not meant to. Enjoy! So first of all, this is how it comes. If you press the welcome button, you get a welcome page. Very exciting. Uh, super easy to do, of course, I could configure that button to load any web page I wanted, and that's quite a handy thing straight off the bat. Uh, you'll see it's automatically moved to my default panel. Uh, this panel has all of my home automation tasks on it, and that's because I'm not editing a video right now. If I opened up Premiere Pro or Photoshop, it would immediately change to a different panel of keys. And that is one of the beautiful things about it, is it can automatically give you the things you're interested in based on the things that you open up on your PC. So in itself, this is a great product, uh, but what I've done is I've started using it for home automation. So I've got music room off and music room on, which will switch all of my lights on and off. Uh, I've got some other lights that perhaps will control other rooms, and I've even got my little vacuum cleaner, so my Broadlink RM Pro will fire off the infrared signal to start my vacuum at the press of one of these buttons, which is pretty cool. Uh, I then got these two buttons here. These will switch panels manually, so if I want to go to my video editing panel, I can click that and I get it. Uh, and clicking that button there, for example, will load Photoshop. My PC, not super fast right now, but there you go, that's Photoshop. Uh, I've got Premiere Pro, a couple of other things I use. Uh, and of course you can load uh, specific files. So I could open up the Wave Loop, uh, which is a file on my desktop, uh, which looks like that, which I have in the background of all my videos. Or I can open a particular folder. So if I close the Wave Loop off, and then click on the PNG folder, I get the folder opened automatically for all of my PNG files for when I'm doing my video editing. So this is a great little device for creating videos, as generally for just work streams, for doing things that you don't want to have to do all the time manually, you can automate them, uh, which is great. And now I'm going to show you how you could do more things than that, because we can connect this thing to if this then that, and get it to control any home automation device in the whole universe. Let's do that! Okay, so in my Stream Deck, I'm going to create a new set of buttons. I'm going to go to Edit Profiles and press the plus button and then double click here and just call it whatever I want. So I'm going to call it If This Then That and press Enter. And if I come out of this now, you'll see that I now have a profile called If This Then That and it's empty. So I now have an empty set of buttons except for this stupid welcome icon. So I'm going to delete the stupid welcome icon and I now have a completely blank slate. Uh, I'm going to create a website button, for example, and I'm going to go to www.dominos.co.uk just to show you exactly what this thing does. Uh, I'm going to change the icon here using set from file, and I'm just going to set the Domino's Pizza icon. Uh, and it's, it really is as simple as this. If I press the button, dominospizza.co.uk loads up, which is amazing. Um, I don't want it to do that, however. If I am in the United States, which sadly I am not, uh, you could actually get this button to simply order your pizza for you uh, just by using if this then that's URL instead of Domino's Pizza's URL. So I could remove this, put in a special URL that would summon if this then that, and if this then that in turn would use the Domino's Pizza service to order your pizza, which is insanity. Uh, you can just drag these buttons around and you'll see it moves instantaneously on the Stream Deck. Uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to add another website. Uh, and this one is going to contain our if this then that URL to switch on Paul's Philips Hue lights. Uh, so I'm going to first of all load up if this then that in a web page. I'm going to sign up. I've already done that, so I'm not going to sign up. You will need to. Uh, I'm going to go to My Applets and then New Applet. Uh, and if you're not familiar with if this then that, it basically connects one thing to another thing. So you could get it so that your Nest thermostats, when it reaches a certain temperature, would set your Philips Hue lights to be blue, for example. Um, I don't know why you'd do that. Perhaps you're mental. Um, but I'm not going to do that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to say, if I receive a particular website address, then make my Philips Hue lights come on. So I'm going to say, if this happens... And I'm going to search for uh, if this then that's webhooks service. 
I'm going to say when I receive a web request, that's the only option I can choose anyway, with the event name hue lamp on, all in one word, I think that's important, uh, and click create trigger, then I want that to happen. And that is Philips Hue. Uh, now, I'm being asked to connect because it doesn't know who I am. It's saying, well, whose Philips Hue account do you want to control? So I'm going to say connect to Paul Hibbert's Philips Hue account. Uh, I'll never have to sign in again. Once you are connected with Ift to Philips, then you can create as many Philips recipes as you like. Uh, the first one we're going to create, and in fact the only one today, is turn on lights. Uh, it then finds all the lights from my account, so it's got my living room lights, right light, left light, and down light. I want it to control all of my living room lights. Create action. And we now have what we call a recipe, uh, which says if the maker event receives hue lamp on, then turn on the living room. Simple as that. Finish. Now all we need is the URL to control that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to uh, my applets again services, and then webhooks, and then documentation. And what this does is it tells you what your personalized URL address is for being able to control the webhooks channel. So that is the URL, and all we have to do is replace the event uh, with the event name we just created. So I can add the uh, event name in there in place of what was there before. Uh, our event name was Hue Lamp on. So I'm just going to put that in exactly the same words. And I now have my URL. So if I copy all of that to my clipboard now, I'm just going to put it into my notepad for safekeeping. That is a special URL for triggering my hue lights uh, in if this then that. And if I put that in here and press the button, congratulations, you fired the hue lamp on event. How exciting. Uh, a bit annoying though, we don't want to see this web page, do we? Fortunately, Stream Deck have thought of that. If I click Access in Background and now press that button, I don't see anything happen, but my Philips Hue lights come on when I press that button. If I want to replace that icon, I can just go Set from File, and I can put my Hue Lamp icon in there, and I've now got a Hue Lamp button that when I press it, it switches my Hue Lamp on. It is simple as that. I have now connected this to if, this, then, that, and I can now switch my lamp on. Philips Hue controlled. So is there any point in getting one of these? The answer is yes and no. Um, it depends really on your usage case. I spend an awful lot of time at my PC and I've got an awful lot of things that I do very regularly and I get fed up of using the mouse to go to the right folder and open in shortcuts up manually when I could just be pressing a button to bring those things up. It's great for Photoshop, it's great for uh, video editing, it's great for lots and lots of things outside of home automation. If you're just looking for a home automation gadget, well, that's not what this is. But that said, you could connect it to a tablet uh, or in fact a little tiny USB stick style Windows 10 PC. And as long as they're running a 64-bit operating system, that's super important, this thing will work. You could put it wherever you wanted. It would be quite an expensive solution, but people spend a lot more than that on professional solutions that don't look this good and aren't this malleable. I think this is actually although I did it for a laugh, a pretty superb little device for doing home automation. So I would recommend this for anyone who spends a lot of time at their PC, not just for the home automation side, but for the automation on your PC side for helping you with your workspace. And I'd also recommend it for anyone who's got money to burn, who just wants to have a really cool device that they can stick anywhere, as long as they've got something they can connect it to as a 64-bit operating system and Windows 10 on it. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please give it a thumbs up. If you want to see some more of this guy, hit that subscribe button. And if you want to help support my channel, there are links in the description to do that too. I'll see you next time. Uh, this is a stream deck and I have no idea what I'm on about. I'm going to start again. <laughs> do a whole bunch of things with... <laughs> what? But I wasn't satisfied with just... Uh, but me being me, I went all mad scientist on it. Mad scient scientist. Scientist. Sci scientist. <laughs> that would have been fine. I could have used that. Why didn't I? Knobhead. <laughs>